I set up my Fluval Roma 240 around six months ago and yeah it's starting to show some problems as a matter of fact it has two problems however we also took some steps to fix that problem so yeah let's talk about it the first problem actually came with the scape itself now don't get me wrong people i really like the scape i like the way it came out it looks really natural and even the fake caves that we put inside they blend in really nicely now because some of the algae grew on it and it's starting to look a bit weathered and yeah i really really like the scape however the scape also created quite a few dead spots in the aquarium for anyone who doesn't know dead spots are areas where the flow doesn't quite reach so what ends up happening is if there's any dirt in the water it will follow the flow but it will start building up in the dead spots and yeah that is a problem you kind of have to deal with if you have a really heavily scaped tank where you have loads of rocks and wood and things like that and it's quite frustrating you know naturally when i put the food in the tank all the fish start going crazy but because they're swimming about so much they start moving all the dead spots about and all that dirt comes up into the water and the water gets really cloudy yeah dead spots are really annoying to deal with now of course the obvious answer would be whenever i do the cleaning i just take the hardscape out and i can properly clean the gravel and that but the thing is the scape the way it's set up like i've got all these rocks piled up on top of the wood and if i want to move the wood i'll have to move the rocks and they're all kind of integrated into each other and also a lot of the fish made their homes underneath a lot of the hardscape and yeah i just don't really want to disturb all of that which means the only real option i have left in regards of cleaning the dead spots is with the siphon when i say siphon i mean this i don't know what would you call this the vacuum i don't know let's just call it the siphon yeah this is the only real option i have left but people the problem is this is so big and the hardscape in my roma 240 is like the branches go everywhere and a lot of these dead spots are around that branchy area so reaching them with this big siphon is almost impossible so yeah physically cleaning the dead spots wasn't really an option however However, there was a few other options I had in regards of fixing this problem. Now the first one, which would be one of the cheaper options, is getting a wave maker. Now a wave maker is amazing if you want to create more flow in your aquarium. You can just put it on the opposite side of the aquarium and it should deal with the dead spots. But of course, having a wave maker means you have to put another piece of equipment into the aquarium, which takes away from the natural look and things like that. So I did want to avoid that. So yeah, I just had the wave maker as a backup option. Now the next thing I could have done to deal with the dead spots is upgrade my filter which of course is one of the most expensive options but yeah the fluval roma 240 comes with the fluval 307 canister filter and the 307 is a very strong and very good filter but i feel like the roma 240 might need just a little bit more power especially if you've got it heavily scaped like if it was a bare aquarium and i had nothing inside of it the 307 would probably give plenty of flow around the aquarium however because it is heavily scaped a 407 will probably do a much better job however people i was thinking there's no need for me to spend all of that extra money on new equipment when there is a perfectly good natural solution that i could do which is adding bottom feeders now people don't get me wrong i'm not expecting the bottom feeders to eat the dirt or anything like that however bottom feeders especially things like corridoras they move around the floor all day and they move everything about so for example in my fluval roma 200 i've got loads of corridoras in there and like i said they move around the floor the whole day and my fluval roma 200 is much more scaped like it's the scape is so much more i don't even know how to say it it's so much more heavier scaped no it's scaped so much more heavily what people let me know in the comments how to say that sentence but yeah you know what i mean in it there's so much more hardscape in that tank and technically it should have much more dead spots than my fluval roma 240 but because i've got corridors in that tank and because they move around all day what happens is any spot that is a potential dead spot i have at least two or three corridors moving through that spot throughout the day and when that happens that dirt goes up into the water and that water goes into the filter gets cleaned and comes out clean of course and i mean yeah like i'm looking at my fluval roma 200 right now and the floor is clean people there's not a single dead spot and i'm telling you it is literally because of the corridors because any potential dead spots there's always at least one or two corridors moving through it on a daily basis and they move all that dirt up into the water it gets sucked into the filter and comes out clean and the dead spots never really have the opportunity to build up so i knew that in my fluval roma 240 i did have the natural solution of adding some bottom 
confidence and the thing is I already had a few I just didn't have enough recently I bought a Pleco the L134 that one cost me £80 so of course I wasn't going to get any more of those however I also got Botia loaches or Botia Darios to deal with the pest snails and they are bottom feeders and they move around the whole tank and yeah I only have two which is why I still have a few dead spots in the aquarium but I was thinking if I just get one more and have a nice group of three that should get the other two a bit more active as well and maybe they'll move around the aquarium a lot more and get those dead spots moving and yeah it's like the whole process of you know dirt in the water through the filter and all of that now I'm sure some of you are thinking well scoops if the Corridoras work so well in your Fluval Roma 200 why don't you just get some more Corridoras and well I could but here's the thing people you see Corridoras they have a spine and that spine is venomous and I've never actually had a problem with that but whilst my Mori eel was in my Fluval Roma 200 I was a little scared I can't lie I felt like all it would take is for my Mori eel to eat one of them they could release some toxins or stab her with their spine and that and it could potentially injure or maybe even take my Mori eel's life and yeah my Mori eel is definitely going to get to a size eventually where she'll be able to swallow a whole Corridora like it's nothing so yeah it's one of the reasons why I haven't added any Corridoras into my Fluval Roma 240 because that is the home of my Mori eel and my intention is to let her grow big in there so I don't really want that stress with the Corridoras and the venom and all of that so I was looking at Botia loaches. now like I mentioned at the start there's actually two problems and the dead spot was only one of them the other problem most of you may already be aware because I've made so many videos on it but it is the algae growing in the aquarium now I did buy a pleco that was the main reason for the pleco he was there to kind of deal with the algae but I kind of knew and some of you also pointed out they are not the best algae eaters and I kind of just used it as an excuse to buy that pleco because I really wanted it however there is one fish that is amazing at eating algae and I've got two of them in my Fluval Roma 240 and they do a great job and that is the Siamese algae eater and looking at the fact that I was looking to get some more bottom feeders as well I was basically killing two birds with one stone if I could manage to get a Siamese algae eater because they're kind of like bottom dwellers they do also move around the floor a lot so yeah I went to Wholesale Tropicals I gave myself a £30 budget and soon as I walked in I went straight to the Botia Loaches to check if they had some and luckily they did and I immediately made a note that I was going to get at least one of them. I would have gotten two but the ones they had there were kind of small and I was worried if I get one that is too small they're just going to end up as a snack for my Mori eel. So yeah I just ended up getting one but I'm hoping that in a few weeks when I go back they will still have some there and they would have grown a little bit and then I can get maybe one or two more to make that group a bit bigger. But yeah because I was only getting one and I still had £20 left off my £30 budget I thought hey let me look around and see what else I can find I also needed to find the Siamese algae eater and people I got a bit lucky there because usually they have baby Siamese algae eaters which are fairly cheap but they are babies so they're very small however that time they did have slightly bigger ones but yeah because it was slightly bigger it did cost a little bit more as well it was £7.50 bringing us to a total of £17.50 at this point people I had a Siamese algae eater and a Botia loach both kind of bottom dwellers they're both going to help me with the dead spot problem and the Siamese algae eater is also going to help me with the algae problem but I was thinking whilst I'm in the store I might as well look around a bit and see if I can find any more bottom dwellers that would be quite cool and unique and that's when I came across the hillstream loaches now I've got hillstream loaches in my 200 litre and they are amazing I love them they're like mini stingrays and they're also really fast they eat algae they move on the bottom so once again I'll be killing two birds with one stone however they are slightly expensive they cost 14 pounds a piece and ideally if I do get some I want to get two so that would have brought me to 28 pounds so i thought i'll leave that for another day but yeah i'm definitely looking to add some into my fluval roma 240 another thing i saw and people i almost done another impulse buy that was the mud eel and yo those mud eels that wholesale tropical has right now they look so cool i don't know how to describe it from the bottom they kind of look like a snake like they have the same head shape like my snake does and yeah they oh i don't know they really look like water snakes and oh, i just wanted one so bad however two things they were 35 pounds which would have taken me way over my budget and also they do produce a bit of slime which can make your aquarium messy so yeah i thought let me do a bit more research on them before i even think about buying one and yeah it, it just would have been an impulse buy anyway but yeah in regards to bottom dwellers hillstream loads 
maybe in the future but for that day i was only going to get the boatier loaches well one boatier loach and the sammy's algae eater whilst i was in the store i also picked up an archer fish there was a reason for that but i'll make a separate video on that before we carry on if you are enjoying this video then let me know by leaving a like and if you want to see more videos like this every single week then please remember to subscribe it really helps me out but yeah anyway so we came back from the fish store i had my boatier loach my sammy's algae eater and the archer fish and i let them acclimate in the aquarium and once they were acclimated i released them all into the aquarium now the boatier loach joined the other two straight away and yo immediately they all became much more active now i don't know what it was when it was only two of them they were fairly active but once you introduce a third one and there was a group of three they all kind of kept each other busy and kept each other really active and i just knew immediately that they were going to have that same effect that the corridoras have which is they're going to move around the floor all day they're going to move all the dead spots about and you know have the debris going into the water through the filter and coming out clean and of course they're going to continue to eat the pest snails and help my aquarium stay fairly clean of pest snails now there's still a few in there but there's nowhere near the amount that we had before so the boatier loaches are definitely doing their job now the Siamese algae eater yo people I just have to say it's already in the name but they are the best algae eater soon as I put him in he started eating immediately start going on the branches on the plants and yes over the next few weeks the aquarium is going to get a bit cloudy every now and then because we've got much more active fish in there now but I'm hoping once we've gone past that period and all the dead spots are gone it should really help with the cloudy water but yeah for now it's going good I'm most definitely going to add one or two more boatier loaches and I'll keep you updated on how it goes now like I mentioned before I originally bought my boatier loaches to help me deal with my pest snail problem and if you want to see that video then click right here 